I don't normally review TV shows here since this is called Adam Rance Movies and not Adam Rance TV or Adam Rance Television or whatever streaming service thing you want to call it. But since Loki, along with WandaVision and Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier, are all part of the MCU and the movies that, you know, accompany them, I think that, uh, I think it's fair game. So, so here's my review of Loki Season 1. Loki follows, of course, the titular character Loki, played by Tom Hiddleston, the mischief maker, the, the, the god of the magic. God of, God of mischief, I guess. I already said mischief, so I don't want to use it again. But here we are. During the aftermath of the attack on New York, Loki is seen stealing the Tesseract after the Avengers come back from time to try to get it. Uh, Hulk is throwing a fit in the background because he had to take the stairs, which gives him a bit of a distraction to get out of there. I think I got that right. It's honestly kind of inconsequential to the plot of this show but just trying to build up to how he gets to the place he gets. Apparently this event was not supposed to take place, which caused a rift in the timeline. Rifts are bad, or, or branch, or whatever they call it, whatever the term is, I'm saying rift, branch. I think they're both fine. I think they're both adequate for this review. <laughs> in order to keep this timeline pristine and going on track like a well-oiled machine, the TVA is responsible for pruning anything and anyone that stops that from happening or deters it from going the course. This is where Loki gets in a heap of trouble as the TVA arrest him, bring him into their bizarre world, which is full of paperwork and offices and boring shit. Although there is a cute animated clock that shows up from time to time, but he has to kind of figure out what's happening, how he got here, how he can get out, and eventually um, how to take down the TVA altogether. There's gonna be spoilers in this as the season ended a few days ago. I wanted to get this out sooner, but I was fighting a cold. So now that I'm feeling a little fresher, I'm okay to talk about it. The other main player here is Mobius, played by Owen Wilson. And man, I missed Owen Wilson. I haven't seen him in a long time. He just has some likable charm to him that I find refreshing. And uh, I, I just enjoyed whenever he was on screen. I just looked on IMDB and the clock animated character Miss Minutes is voiced by Tara Strong. Because of course it is. She's apparently one of four voice actors working in the industry, it's crazy. It's crazy they can't find any other voice actors besides Tara Strong and Nolan North. I'm not gonna go through all the chain of events in this show because honestly, I can't remember them all or how things end up going where they go. Instead, I'm gonna just do a, a little overview of my impressions of the season, where I think it should go next, how I think it performed, and on the next video, I'll just quickly rank the three Disney Plus uh, shows so far. I'm not gonna do Daredevil and Jessica Jones and all them because to me, those are like the Incredible Hulk. Sure, they're technically part of the MCU, but are they? The six episodes of Loki are slow moving. This is not a fast paced show. They were, however, interesting enough to hold my attention, which is good. My son Connor watched all three of these MCU Disney Plus shows with me. He enjoyed them all. He didn't love them all. I can't say I loved them all. I did ultimately enjoy Loki. I want to see more Loki, which is a good thing. There is some action. I didn't honestly care about the action, which is kind of funny to say about a, a Marvel property. You know, typically I'm all in when it comes to the fighting, uh, the, the spectacle. But for Loki to not only keep my interest, but also keep me engaged and keep me entertained without having to resort to the, the punches and the kicks, I'll give him some props there. I will say, Loki does feel a little bit neutered now that he can't have fun anymore. Like, his main characteristic is mischief. And when you don't let him do mischief, what do you got here? You got a, you got a likable, but honestly a bit of a blank canvas character. Now, I understand they have run into a bit of a situation with this guy because he has grown, unlike some other characters, he's grown immensely over the course of the the MCU. You know, we've seen him start as a maniacal, evil, sinister villain who wants to enslave Earth, and eventually he comes to love Thor, he comes to love his father and his mother. Um, I mean, it's, it was always there deep down, but now it's, it's, it's bubbled over. You know, he can come to terms with who he is, the mistakes he's made, and that is acknowledged in the show quite often. You know, they do a good job with that. Which brings us to the next variant, Sylvie. Uh, these characters are called variants because there's multiple versions of each other. There's twists, there's turns. Ultimately, it ends up in a place that I was pretty cool with. I haven't seen any reviews on this. I'm sure people are let down. I don't know if there's any way to please everyone. I mean, there's not. That's that's impossible. But I think 
the majority should be kind of happy with where things left. No, they don't conclude. The, the show doesn't have a beginning, middle, and end. It has a beginning, a middle, and a promising, exciting further middle. <laughs> I mean, it's a TV show. I don't want them to close everything up. They did get us to an ultimate, you know, headmaster though, the guy behind the curtain. We do see that. I didn't even think they'd get that far, honestly. I thought they would tease it again. Another big plus for the show is the soundtrack. I think this one is awesome. I think it's way better than WandaVision. I think it's way better than Captain Falcon or Cap, yeah, Captain Falcon. I, I hate the title of that show. Anyway, this one's really good. I, I, I eat it up. It's man. It's not Mandalorian level, which by the way, that's top tier Disney plus material. This is, this doesn't hit that level for sure. But season two, I could see getting there. Honestly, I think this has the bones. This has the structure needed to go some really interesting places. And out of all the Disney Plus shows, I think this one has the most significance when it comes to the movie verse of the MCU. I, I can see the uh, the lasting effects spilling over into Doctor Strange, into maybe Ant-Man 3, or if there's a Wanda movie at some point. I don't know where they're going with that show. Uh, I can just see this having some some interesting lasting effects that will will spill over into the other properties. Favorite character is absolutely Alligator Loki. My son and I ate it up whenever that little CG creature showed up. Thought it was hilarious. He's ripping hands off. He's having a good time. Uh, the, the kid Loki was pretty cool how he reveals he killed Thor, young Thor. So there's, there's some... That's probably my favorite episode. I think that was episode uh, five. Where they, where they get thrown into the void, where there's that giant, you know, monster beast thing. I forgot the name of it. It gets explained in six what it is. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm glad that it it concluded a lot of the um, a lot of the elements that that they proposed. You know, it's not like Lost or some shitty show where they they throw up, you know, everything in the kitchen sink. And then they might answer one thing, but they propose about 50 new things. And by the end, you just have a salad of, of different ingredients that don't even taste well together anymore. And, and you're never going to be fulfilled at the end of the day. You're going to have to fill in the pieces yourself. Loki manages to cover, I'd say, about 85% of the questions in the first. Proposes a couple new ones at the end. And uh, I guess that's a good place to end this kind of thought bubble. From what I gathered, and I haven't looked online because I refuse to have other people explain things for me. I think I'm smart enough. But it appears that Loki was dropped into a different uh, universe. Sylvie threw him back to the TVA, but it wasn't the TVA he was previously in. Which makes me think that this isn't even his universe or that his universe was already fractured to the point where characters have been changed or altered. I'm not entirely sure how the time is really playing in this. It's it's a little convoluted. Uh, either way, things are certainly amiss. And this is not, Mobius doesn't have a clue who this guy is anymore. Uh, there's a statue of that, you know, the timekeeper or whatever his name is. V very interesting and engaging stuff. And I'm looking forward to season two, as I've stated. There's two negatives for me. Neither is like super horrible, but one I'd say is the action. Even though I didn't care so much about it when it was there, some of it's pretty bad. Uh, sp specifically in episode four, I believe, when they, they find the fake timekeepers, there's a fight. <laughs> it's just, it's really poorly choreographed and it, it's filmed kind of sloppily. I just didn't, I didn't like it at all. Uh, that was disappointing, especially when Marvel's pretty damn good when it comes to their action. Uh, that was a letdown. There was a train fight on one episode that was all right, but nothing stood out. The other negative for me is there's six shows. I think it could have been cut down to four and still retained all the information we currently have. There's just a lot of additional plotting and slowness to it that feels like it's there just to pad out the runtime and justify six episodes. Whereas something like Mandalorian definitely has monster of the week things that can be a little bit repetitive where he goes to a planet, saves the day, leaves right away. At least there's a contained story there with the beginning, middle, and end. Whereas Loki is very much just on this one centralized concept of stopping the TVA, uncovering who the timekeepers are. There isn't really a week-to-week -week accomplishment. And I think that that kind of hurts the overall structure of the show, which is hopefully something they can resolve in season two. And nothing really major. Good show. It kept me entertained. I'm excited for more. And uh, I guess that's it. So for a score, which I absolutely have to do because people demand them and they, they really mean a lot. I'm gonna give this eight out of 10 Loki Gators. 
that's my review of Loki. If you agreed, shout out in the comments, give the video a like. If you disagreed, shout out in the comments, give the video a like. So it's a win, win, win. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to Adam Does Movies. I do plenty of videos every single week and I would love to have you stick around. All right, take care. I hope you had a good time, I know I did. If you wanna see more of me, and there's just not enough here to go around, I have a second channel called Adam Olinger, where I occasionally put up a inconsequential rant about something stupid in a comedical style. I also throw up uh, occasional Twitch highlights that you can check out on, on Twitch if you want the full deal. It's Adam Olinger over there as well. If you really appreciate what I'm doing, I'm also at Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, or you can even become a YouTube member right here. Tons of possibilities at your fingertips.